हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द स्पेशल एपिसोड ऑफ बिग आइडिया वी आर डिलाइटेड टू वेलकम डॉक्टर उपेंद्र कॉल चेयरमैन एंड डीन एकेडेमिक्स एंड रिसर्च एट बत्रा हॉस्पिटल एंड मेडिकल रिसर्च सेंटर न्यू डेली अ डिस्टिंग्विश कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट एंड पद्माश्री अवार्डी डॉक्टर कॉल हैज बीन एट द फोर फ्रंट ऑफ एडवांसिंग कार्डियोवेस्कुलर मेडिसिन इन इंडिया विद डेकेड्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस टीचिंग एंड रिसर्च his insights continue to shape the nation's approach to preventive and interventional cardiology dr call thank you so much for joining us it's been a pleasure to have you thank you for the invitation sir to start with how do you view the current state of cardiovascular health in india and are we doing enough to recognize it as a national priority cardiovascular problems in this country as everybody knows are enormous and uh, non communicable diseases which are you know at the forefront after we have you know uh, sorted out some most of the communicable diseases the vascular events cardiovascular events strokes these are the major problems and these are unfortunately not coming under control in fact every year we see hike in the number of patients dying of myocardial infarction strokes and all the complications because of that and this is coupled with you know aging process now we have younger people we have older people the average age has increased you know longevity has gone beyond 65 70 years so the diseases which of the elderly are there but we are having you know cardiovascular problems one decade before what uh, you know you see in the west so late 30s and 40s we have so many patients with the, these problems and that is because i think the awareness of the major risk factors is lacking in the masses at the same time you know having 1.2 billion population and you know it a uh, large number of them living in remote areas and uh, villages where the media doesn't reach so far so these problems like hypertension high blood pressure is present you know in more than one third of the patients may 30 to 35 to 40 percent of our adult population is high blood pressure and the recognition is poor the treatment to goals is uh, improper diabetes 11 percent 10 to 11 percent of our population is diabetes once again the recognition is delayed till the time the person gets a complication of diabetes he is not aware of it a routine checkups at you know younger ages are uh, much lower than what it should be so unless you know the population of high bp diabetes obesity is at an increase you know everybody talks about it even the prime minister talks about it you know 10% to 20% tel khana kam kariye so all those major things uh, plus uh, rapid urbanization people because of you know to get jobs and other things moving to cities overcrowding pollution all this leading to a major hike in the cardiovascular diseases facilities to treat them are increasing but they are not keeping in you know line with the numbers required insurance for people is scanty and those who get insured they get insured then after they have already had a problem and the uh, schemes uh, are coming up this ayushman and other things are coming up but i think much more needs to be done and uh, future seems to be bright the way new schemes are coming right. but uh, the problem is there and it has to be recognized and i think uh, media and this kind of meetings which you are attending today are you know crucial and critical for this okay so sir uh, i have a follow up question for this so how can we spread awareness regarding the regular checkups and early screening of this uh, diseases like diabetes and all i think it has to start from the schools colleges i think school is the best because the school education and literacy rate is increasing children do go to school most of the people children go to school to catch them between 5 and 15 years of age and uh, that is the stage like uh, i am involved with an ngo called gauri call foundation in kashmir we have chosen three districts and we are going sequentially to schools and trying to find out obesity catch it there 
and also trying to find out by echocardiograms with a mobile unit, portable unit, trying to find out birth defects, rheumatic heart disease, and, uh, you know, that's how you can catch them. And similarly, you know, teaching the school teachers, teaching their parents that what kind of food they should be eating, the the tuck shops or the places in the school where these things are sold, eating things are sold, should be, you know, keeping heart-healthy things rather than chips and other things which you know are not so good. So it has to start from that stage. And then at the time when you get into the employment, whatever kind of employment is there, because everybody is seeking employment and we have, you know, shortage of jobs, but at the same time people do get jobs. At that stage, if you have a medical checkup, it doesn't need a very elaborate checkup. Blood pressure, yes. blood sugar. If the blood pressure is very good, then he doesn't have to worry about it for a year or so. But if the blood pressure is borderline, somebody has a blood pressure of 140, 150, it should be checked again. So that's how you'll pick up. So everybody should be told that you know, you remember the size of your collar. You know what is the size of your shoe. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you should be knowing what is your blood pressure, what is your blood sugar, which is very simple. Yes. If you do such simple things also, you go to what is your weight, what should be the ideal weight? So if you make them aware, uh, I don't say that everybody will fall in line, but at least you have conveyed a message that you are overweight. Your body mass index is more than you know 25. You're overweight. You're more than 30. You're obese, and obesity is associated with this, 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 this problem. So I think awareness has to be built at various stages, so starting this, early. So basically, adding small things in your habits, regular checkups. Regular uh, that you know, sugar, gar pe check ho jati hai. To wo kar sakte hum. Instead of depending upon the doctors, we can do that. That's right. And everybody, you know, in a big family, joint family, we still have joint families, yes. majority. And one of the elderly relations is hypertensive, high BP. BP machine bhi padi hoti hai, but still, sab log nahi check karte hai. Yes. Usme to koi mushkil hi nahi hai na? So, sir, uh, moving on to my next question. Uh, for patients living with obstructive HCM, how does this condition affect their everyday life? Obstructive, you asked a very specific question. Yes. HCM means hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, yes. means that the heart muscle has become thick and there is no other obvious cause for it. Patient doesn't have IBP, patient doesn't have any valve disease which can lead to thick heart muscle. And uh, this is a common problem, but at the same time, very poorly recognized. It is estimated that one in 250 healthy people may have HCM. And some studies say if not one, 250, at least one, one in 500. And that means a large number. And very often it presents early without symptoms or the symptoms are vague. So a suspicion has to be there. And whenever there's a suspicion, you have to get a Echo, echocardiography done and which can clinch the diagnosis. Okay. Thickness of the muscle, if it is more than 1.5 centimeters or, you know, getting more technical if the septum is thicker than the posterior wall. So, because if it is asymptomatic today, most of them get into problems over a variable period of time. Some of them develop heart failure. Some of them develop uh, episodes of unconsciousness what we call a syncope. Some of them, this is also a cause of sudden cardiac death, especially in younger people, family history, in genetic studies. Um, many of these have abnormal genomes, and you can, if there's a person who has been picked up with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in a young age, screen the family. You're going to bound to find more people, totally asymptomatic, but with abnormal echoes. Okay. And if you, you know, recognize it early, guide them. And uh, there are some simple drugs also which help. Some things like metoprolol or beta blockers, which are very often used. And there are many other advances in the, uh, you know, in this field. And about 60 to 70 percent of them have obstruction, which you started with, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. They develop a pressure difference between the heart chamber and its outlet. And that 
is uh, more severe. And some people do not have this pressure difference at rest, but there are provocative measures to do it. In short, if you have suspicion, they should be referred to a specialized center where an echo can be done. And if you pick it up early, the management becomes simpler and the long-term prognosis becomes better. And then you have some very high-risk individuals. Hypertrophy beyond 3 centimeters, very thick. Cavity size, very small. These are the patients who can who develop or prone to sudden death. And these patients should be given devices or implantable defibrillators, which can be life-saving, especially you know, in a young person suddenly dying. That is you know, very catastrophic. And uh, there is, uh, as I told you, that it is under-recognized, and we have many of them where we don't know. So suspicion is most important. You suspect it and go on a particular clinical algorithm. As you have mentioned, that a large number of heart attacks occur without any warning. So how can we encourage people to go for that regular checkup or they can identify that their heart is at risk? Once again, you see, nine risk factors, nine risk factors explain 90% of heart attacks. And those nine risk factors is number one is high cholesterol level, bad cholesterol level being high. Number two is uh, smoking, which continues still, I think, 20 to 30 percent of the population are smokers. Number three is high BP. Number four is diabetes. Number five is overweight. And uh, stress, you know, stress at home, stress at work. And then there are some risk factors like eating less amount of fruits and vegetables. You know, normally one should be taking three to four servings. That becomes a risk factor. And not exerting enough, lack of exercise. Okay. So these are the eight risk factors. Ninth one is questionable. It used to be said that consuming small amount of alcohol protects the heart, but that's gone away. Okay. In fact, WHO now says that even one drop of alcohol is bad. So at least these eight risk factors explain 90%. So if you make the people aware how many of you have these risk factors, and they are not one plus one becomes two, they are additive. If you're hypertensive, a person with a high BP is a diabetic also, is very high risk for a heart attack. Okay. And he starts smoking also, he's bound to develop a heart attack sooner or later. So I think recognition of these risk factors has to be promoted as often as you can promote it at all levels. Okay, sir. So, sir, I'll move on to my next segment, which is the rapid fire round. I'll ask very short questions and I'll request you to answer in very short and uh, quick way. So, sir, my first question is one healthy habit you swear by? Exercise. Okay. And morning walk or gym workout? Anything. Exercise of any kind. One food you recommend everyone for a healthy heart? Fruits, fresh fruits. Okay. And so any a, uh, technology in cardiology like AI and uh, remote monitoring, how what will you suggest? I think remote monitoring and AI is very good but as long as uh, it is accessible to you and as, uh, as long as you know how to use it. You know, it's still in the initial phases in the general public. So, sir, finally with my last question, what research or innovation in the HCM space you are most optimistic about in for the next five years? I think the new drugs, especially Mavacemptin, which has come, is a very important drug. Strikes at the root cause of it. The root cause is this drug, when it is administered in a small dose of 5 milligrams per day, acts on it and active actin myosin coupling is reduced. And that's how the hypertrophy, that thickness of the heart reduces, symptoms come down and I think this is one of the major breakthroughs and many of these patients would have required surgery or alcohol septal ablation and all that that this drug can take care of. I think this is one of the very important drugs. Besides we have beta blockers which have been there but not as effective. So sir with this we came to an end for our episode. Thank you so much for giving your valuable time to us. Thank you.